have storm cellars, those type of things. Uh, you know, we don't don't think about it a lot because we don't have a lot of tornadoes uh, in this area. But uh, for the recent, you know, we do have some significant wind events um, from time to time, so we just want to make sure the public's aware of that, what they are, and how, how they might can uh, can benefit from those. Flooding is kind of the that's kind of the most recent disaster we've had, so it's kind of focused. You notice. Um, as you look at the plan, there's a lot of action steps dealing with flooding in there. Um, one of the one of the big things we want to do is continue efforts to acquire a more detailed flood flood study um, for the entire county. Right now, the, the flood maps and the flood study was done by FEMA. Um, just constant. We only have a detailed flood study within the city limits of Alaska. The main reason for that is because that's the only area they really have enough information that they can do a detailed study for. So we, we've got some action steps in there. We want to try and um, get some of that information they need and hopefully get a more detailed flood study for a broader area of the whole county. Um, also, we want to continue identifying areas where we might can improve our storm, um, storm water management um, so that, so that we, we're able to, when we do have these, these heavy rain events, we're able to, to uh, take home the water and, and get it off more quickly. Um, research the feasibility of creating attention additional retention areas, that was a big, um, that, that was a big topic after, after the flooding. Uh, and, and again, this is not saying that we're going to build additional, additional retention areas, we're just going to look at it and see if that's something that might benefit the community and something that we, uh, <coughs> we want to consider doing. Um, we're going to continue, also want to continue our flood plain management practices so that we can remain in, in, in the National Flood Insurance Program and also work with um, Dash and Rams and hopefully encourage them. Those are the only two communities in Lowndes County that do not participate in the flood insurance program, so those residents can't get flood insurance. So we work with them to develop some floodplain management practices. Because again, if you have effective floodplain management on the front end, hopefully that's going to lessen the impact if we do have enough flood. And also, um, to kind of further that, look into the community rating system which is basically, the community rating system is the NFIP, what ISO is in the fire department. Um, it just, it, you know, they look at your rating and based on your rating, it may make it, uh, it may make it feasible, you know, there may be some things we can do to make flood insurance a little cheaper for, for residents, so that's something that um, will work for us, and obviously, you know, we have that in about years, so we can work on that. You know, and another big uh, initiative we'd like to look at is working with the USGS, National Weather Service and the Valor staff or the Regional Commission just to, to um, gather some information and hopefully be able to develop an interactive flood model so that the different stages of the, um, at the different stages of the river, we kind of know what areas will be impacted. That will help us in our warning and, and, uh, and the main processes. Uh, lightning was another, another hazard. Uh, not a lot you can do about lightning other than uh, be aware. So one of the things is make sure that, that all our public outdoor recreation facilities um, encourage the installation of um, detection of warning equipment so that you do have a baseball game going on. Uh, I know most of the, the, the high school football stadiums already have this. just want to expand that into some of the other public recreation areas so we know when lightning is nearby so we can get people to the, to the same areas. And also provide some technical and educational assistance to local businesses and organizations, mainly thinking along lines of like golf courses, those type of things. Uh, just giving them information on uh, lightning detection equipment and how it might benefit their business. <coughs> um, wildfires, uh, identifying the wild and urban, urban interface areas, and mapping those in GIS. Um, we have a little bit of that data, but just making sure it gets them to give our valor staff and get it incorporated into our. Um, GIS mapping so that um, that can help our planning staff as we're, as we're planning we'll kind of know where these areas are. And then continue working with the, um, the Georgia Forestry Commission and their FireWise program and just encouraging as we have new developments going in that, that we maybe incorporate some of these FireWise practices into, um, into those developments. <clears throat> Drought, which is something that we're currently, currently facing. Um, and again, that's one of those things, there's not a lot you can do, you can't, you can't make it rain, you can't. Um, so it's basically, you know, conservation as much as possible on the front end. So we just want to make sure that we have plans in place, that if we 
do have a significant drought that affects our domestic um, water consumption that we have plans to make sure that people at least have drinking water. And also um, <coughs> developing a, a response plan to implement um, additional water restrictions if we determine that those um, need to be in place and drought conditions exist. And, and, and with this particular, that particular bullet, um, that's something that I believe both us and the, and the city already have in place. It, um, I, just to be honest, that's one of those things that uh, is something we already do, so it's nothing new. But Gina said you need to put something there, so he said, oh, we're already doing that. They still have a camera. Um, <clears throat> sinkholes, um, just want to continue considering the ground study of areas. If, if we know an area um, is maybe at risk for a sinkhole before we build a road or, or have a development go in there, we just want to have that area studied to make sure that we're not building on top of something. That's <coughs> Fall in. Um, dam failure. Um, Georgia's the Georgia State Dams Program. They already come out, come in and periodically inspect dams on a, on a regular basis. Uh, you know, not all dams fall under that program, so we, we really don't have a lot of information on the impacts that a dam failure would have. Fortunately, we've never really had one to worry about, but we just want to make sure that. Um, we continue those structural assessments, and if we do identify an area, identify them, maybe have some, some small issues, then we go ahead and initiate a um, project to make sure that's correct before the dam fails, so that we can uh, alleviate some of that, um, some of that impact that way. And also, um, either if there are some um, impact studies of the downstream impacts of a dam failure out there for certain dams, we want to get those, so we'll have those for our planning purposes. And for some of the some of the higher risk dams that, that could pose a problem if there's not a study, then look into the feasibility of, of having one done for us so we can at least know what to expect, know who would be affected if the dam were to fail. Extreme heat and cold. Um, big focus there is on um, just making sure we've got plans in place for for shelter and make sure we've got a um, instead of um, waiting for the event to happen, making sure that we've got um, we're prepared to provide temporary shelter. Again, that's something that we, we are prepared for. <coughs> and using the National Weather Service criteria to work with the, um, the staff of the National Weather Service to identify when we you know, make sure we get the um, appropriate precautionary information out to the public when we have new temperatures do get um, overly excessive high or, or below range. And then there's a lot of things that fall in the all hazards category, meaning that they apply they don't apply to one specific event, but they basically um, they're basically kind of generic in nature, and they apply to everything. One of those is providing backup utility systems for all our critical facilities, um, like at the EFC. You know, we have a backup power, backup water, backup sewer. Um, we want to make sure that we've got the, the same systems in place for um, for all of our critical facilities that we need to we need to keep up and going uh, following disaster. Um, also, we'll continue to focus on um, emphasizing the importance of no weather radios for getting that emergency weather information to the public, as well as our other means of receiving information, such as the code red system that we have. Um, we want to assess the feasibility of outdoor warning sirens. This, this is a carryover from the last one. Uh, this isn't safe that we're going to look at getting, necessarily look at getting sirens into um, in, in Lowndes County. Um, but we, we never want to take take any option off the table. We want to continue looking at what we can do. And one of the biggest reasons this is left in here is um, this is a multi-jurisdictional. This does just apply to Lown the unincorporated Lowndes County. It, it, it encompasses all the cities as well. So even if it may not be feasible for the Board of Commissioners to um, look at purchasing a bunch of warning sirens, um, like what we've seen with Hey Hiram, they just installed one. You know, it was, it was feasible for them to make about one side and cover the whole city. So um, there's some things that are in there that may apply to one jurisdiction and not the other. Uh, <clears throat> and also continue to provide education and stress the need for personal preparedness to, um, to the general public. And education and making sure that um, the public is prepared to know what they, they can do and take care of themselves, take some personal responsibility as much as possible. You know, they, if, you know, a lot of times they don't, they don't do the things they need to because they don't so we can eliminate some of that, and that's, that's also a big focus in the mitigation. And that is the, uh, that is the 
Thank you. 